Here's where you're gonna learn what it takes to be a real mafioso. Welcome to Celeste. You play as Hat Kid, immortal deity of 3D collectathons and wait, this is still hat in time. My bad. <clears throat> Welcome to Celeste. You play as Madeline, child athlete and wave dash spammer. Your goal is to climb to the top of Krakatoa before your evil palette swap rival Battleline beats you to it. On the way there, you'll encounter many foes, such as chortling grandma, lumber sexual Instagram user, and more. As Madeline, you hail from the fictional land of Canada, where Krakatoa is supposedly located. In order to reach its peak without freezing to death, however, you'll need to craft a strawberry shortcake from the sentient fruits you find along your way, which will bestow unto you enough cold resistance to reach the top. Also, people climb the mountain to come to grips with life's hardships, but who really cares about that anyway? On your way to the top of Mount Everest, you'll have to traverse through a variety of unique areas, each which bring an enjoyable gimmick into the mix. Levels start off with relatively simple obstacles such as spikes and thwomps. Nothing a veteran gamer such as myself hasn't already seen. However, as you get deeper into the game, these gimmicks become more interesting and engaging. Fortunately for Madeline, unlike most Olympians, she has the ability to double jump, which allows for multiple solutions to singular puzzles early on. Some levels have you avoiding enemies while platforming, others introduce new abilities or moving blocks. A favorite of mine is the hipster boss battle. Here, you're supposed to sacrifice Theo for his fashion crimes against humanity. However, his death must be executed with ritualistic precision, resulting in you having to platform around some levels while carrying his ensnared body, all while his goons try to stop you at any cost. That being said, this game isn't for the faint of heart. The levels scale up in difficulty pretty quickly, and there's also a heavy wind level, which are among some of the worst levels in all of video game history, alongside sewer areas and water temples. However, as a friend of mine aptly put it, the difficulty of the game is, in a way, used as a narrative device in order to help you relate and feel the struggles of Madeline as the both of you climb Krakatoa. In this way, it feels much more relieving after completing a challenging area, and it really pushes the narrative and gameplay that much further. You don't need me to tell you how phenomenal this game looks and sounds, but I will add that playing on a controller ups the experience in my opinion, as the button presses and rumbling on an X-Bone controller really took it to the next level for me. On top of the game's excellent retro art style, there are also plenty of effects littered around which just add that much more charm to the game. Plus, after completing each level, you're rewarded with a piece of art, which really motivates one to get to the end. Did I get all the fruits? I think I missed at least one pathway. Oh, that's so sweet. Shit. Celeste sits with Hades in a hat in time in the category of fantastic composition. Even if I can't motivate you to drop the dough for this game, its soundtrack is free on both YouTube and Spotify, so you literally have no excuse to not give it a listen. Overall, Celeste is just another in my ever-expanding library of wonderful, must-play indie games. Every aspect of it is pleasant to take in, and its B and C sides provide for countless additional hours of replayability. For these reasons and more, it's pretty clear this is why you should play Celeste.